Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about cancer of the vagina and vulva. In the first part we will talk about cancer of the vagina and in the second part about cancer of the vulva. Cancer of the vagina is a malignant growth in the area of the vagina. This type of cancer makes up around 2% of all malignant growth in the female genital tract, so luckily it is rather rare. Around half of the women that are diagnosed with cancer of the vagina are over 70 years old and around 15% are between 20 and 50 years old. More common than a primary malignancy of the vagina is the metastasis to the vagina from other organs that are primarily affected. What can cause it? The exact cause is so far unknown, but there are some risk factors that we know. The risk factors are similar to the ones for the development of cervical carcinoma and include the infection with the human papilloma virus, especially the high risk strains 16 and 18. Also, nicotine use, promiscuity, and lichen sclerosis are risk factors. Lichen sclerosis is a degenerative change of the skin in the genital tract that presents with atrophy and hyperplasia. It is associated with autoimmune diseases such as vitiligo and autoimmune thyroid disorders. Which symptoms does it cause? Around 20% of patients don't have any symptoms. In most patients, the cancer will cause vaginal bleeding especially after intercourse. Further, it can lead to vaginal discharge and hardening of the tissue. When the tumor grows exophytically, so towards the inner lumen of the vagina, also a pressure pain can be seen. Vaginal cancer most commonly develops in the posterior aspect of the upper third of the vagina. In later progression, also disorders of urination and defecation are possible. It leads to metastasis early in its progression. The neighboring organs, which are the rectum, ureters, urethra and urinary bladder, are most commonly involved. When the carcinoma involves the upper third of the vagina, the cancer can also spread via the pelvic lymph nodes. If it is found in the middle third, it spreads via the pelvic and inguinal lymph nodes. If the cancer is found in the lower third, it spreads via the inguinal lymph nodes. How can we diagnose vaginal cancer? If a suspicious lesion is found, or if a patient presents with symptoms indicative of this type of cancer, we can do a colposcopy. A colposcopy is a type of examination of the cervix, vagina and vulva. The colposcope, the device with which we can examine those tissues, is basically a microscope with a light attached to it. In modern devices, there is also a camera to save the images and a screen where the patient herself or another doctor can follow the examination. During the colposcopy, Often biopsies are taken of the areas that look suspicious. We can take different types of biopsies, which mainly differ in the depth of the tissue piece that is taken out. In 95% of cases of an invasive vaginal carcinoma, the histology reveals a squamous cell carcinoma. More rarely are found adenocarcinomas, sarcomas or melanomas. Extremely rarely, but possible, are also adenoid basal cell carcinomas or neuroendocrine carcinomas. The squamous cell carcinoma can be further subdivided according to its histopathology and morphology. We differentiate the keratinizing and non-keratinizing carcinoma, the papillary, basal, condylomatous and verrucous carcinoma. Depending on the localization and area involved by the cancer, we can also make other examinations, such as a MRI, PET-CT, urethrocystoscopy or rectoscopy. 
we basically want to see if other organs are involved. Either the neighboring organs or distant sites where metastases may be found. How is vaginal cancer staged? The staging usually occurs postoperatively by the TNM classification. In stage 1 carcinoma, the cancer cells are only found in the wall of the vagina. In stage 2 carcinoma, the cancer has spread to the vascular and connective tissues around the vagina, called the paracolpium, but the lymph nodes are not involved. In stage 3 carcinoma, the nearby lymph nodes and neighboring organs are involved. In stage 4 carcinoma, the cancer has spread to organs outside the pelvis. The staging of precancerous lesions is divided into the grade of dysplasia. Dysplasia means the presence of abnormal cells that are not yet cancer but might develop to cancer over time. For vaginal cancer, there are two precancerous lesions. The first one is abbreviated as VAIN1. It is also called low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion and describes a low grade dysplasia. In VAIN1, there are dysplastic cells found in one third of the entire thickness of the vaginal wall. The second type of dysplasia is abbreviated as VAIN2. It is also called high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. This describes a high-grade dysplasia or carcinoma in situ. Here dysplastic cells are found in two-thirds of the entire thickness of the vaginal wall, but the basal membrane is still intact. How can we treat cancer of the vagina? The treatment depends on the stage of the carcinoma. In case of a vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia, so in a precancerous lesion, the treatment is usually surgical. Different ways of treatment are available and include a destruction of the dysplastic tissue with a carbon dioxide laser, a local excision or a partial or total colpectomy, so the removal of parts of the vagina. The treatment approach depends on the age and general health status of the patient and also depends on if there is an infection with a human papilloma virus. Also a local pharmacological treatment with 5-fluorouracil or imiquidum are possible. The treatment of invasive vaginal carcinoma depends on the stage of the carcinoma. A stage 1 carcinoma is usually treated with either a partial or total colpectomy. A stage 2 carcinoma is usually treated with radiotherapy or radiochemotherapy. In some cases also a surgical therapy can be considered. The surgery for this stage is usually a colpectomy with removal of the paracolpium and a radical hysterectomy with lymph adenectopy. So basically the vagina and its surrounding tissues are removed, together with the uterus and regional lymph nodes. A stage 3 and 4 carcinoma is usually treated with a radiochemotherapy and a surgical removal of the affected organs. If the bladder had to be removed, a neobladder can be formed with tissue from the small intestine. And if the rectum had to be removed, an enterostoma so the opening of the intestine through the abdominal wall can be made. After the treatment, the patient should be checked for a follow-up every three months for the first two years and after that every six months. How is the prognosis for this type of cancer? The prognosis depends on the histologic type of the carcinoma. In a squamous cell carcinoma, the five-year survival rate is around 55%. In an adenocarcinoma, around 60%. In case of a malignant melanoma, the 5-year survival rate is unfortunately only around 13%. Also, the prognosis depends on the stage of the cancer at the time of diagnosis. If the cancer is diagnosed at stage 4, 
the five-year survival rate is unfortunately only around 20%. Is there any prevention? The only kind of prevention is the HPV vaccine for cases that are caused by the human papilloma virus. In the next part of the video, we will talk about vulvar cancer. The vulva is the umbrella term for the external genitalia in women and refers to the labia majora, labia minora, the vaginal opening, the opening of the urethra and the clitoris. A carcinoma of the vulva can affect any of these parts, but most commonly the labia majora. Carcinoma of the vulva accounts for around 4% of all carcinomas of the female genital tract. The age peaks are at around 55 years of age and around 77 years of age. In the younger age group, around 75% of patients test positive for an infection with the human papilloma virus, most commonly of the strains 16 and 18. In the older age group, around 50% of patients have concomitant diseases such as hypertension, obesity, diabetes mellitus, and lichen sclerosis. Which symptoms are associated with vulvar carcinoma? As we said, the tumor most commonly occurs at the labia majora, followed by the labia minora. A cancer in this area often leads to pain and pruritus, so itching. Furthermore, in the progression of the disease, a burning sensation, discharge, swelling and ulceration of the tumor can occur. Around 20% of patients are asymptomatic. With growing of the tumor, also the vagina, anus, urethra, bladder, rectum and perineum can be involved and further symptoms can arise from the organ involvement. How is this cancer diagnosed? As the cancer involves outer organs, it is usually visible with a bare eye, but a colposcope can be used to magnify the tissue. Usually a biopsy is taken from the suspicious area. The histologic examination reveals in around 90% of cancer a squamous cell carcinoma. More rare are sarcoma, basal cell carcinoma, melanoma or metastases from other sites. This type of cancer usually gives rise to metastases early in its progression via the lymphogenic pathway. The inguinal, pelvic and paraaortal lymph nodes are the ones that are usually affected. At a tumor depth of 1.1 to 5 mm, there is a metastasis found in around 15% of cases. With a tumor depth of more than 5 mm, a metastasis is found in around 35% of cases. How is vulvar cancer staged? A stage 1 vulvar carcinoma is restricted to the vulva. Stage 1 is subdivided into the stages 1A and 1B. A stage 1A carcinoma means that the cancer lesion is less than 2 cm in size and invades less than 1 mm into the tissue. No lymph nodes are involved in this stage. Stage 1b means that the cancer lesions are more than 2 cm in size and the cancer invades the tissue further than 1 mm. Also in this stage, no lymph nodes are involved. A stage 2 vulvar carcinoma means that the tumor invades the neighboring perineal structures. Those are the lower urethra, the lower vagina and the anus. Also in this stage no lymph nodes are involved. A stage 3 vulvar carcinoma invades the neighboring perineal structures as well as the inguinofemoral lymph nodes. A stage 4 vulvar carcinoma invades either the upper urethra and or the vaginal mucosa, bladder mucosa, rectal mucosa or the bone of the pelvis. Also if there are any distant metastases, the carcinoma is staged as stage 4. How is vulvar cancer treated? A vulvar carcinoma 
is usually treated surgically. Depending on the size, depth and organ involvement, either a hemivulvectomy or a total vulvectomy can be done. Usually also the inguinal and pelvic lymph nodes are removed. When other organs are involved, also they have to be removed. In late stages of the disease, also a radiochemotherapy is usually done. If there is a hematogenous spread to distant organs, a systemic chemotherapy can be given, but unfortunately only in around one third of cases this leads to remission. After the treatment, the patient should present for follow-up examinations every three months for the first two years and after that every six months. The five-year survival rate is overall around 70%. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.